Hey guys, Mike here, Grinding Gears Garage. We just want to do a video for you guys today on what to look for when buying an ATV four wheeler or quad. We've had a lot of people message us on our Facebook page, you know, asking what to look for when they go to look at this quad or they send us photos of a quad asking our opinion on it. So we just want to do a video for you guys, show you guys the best things you can do when going to look at a new four wheeler for yourself. Uh, we're going to break this down into three separate sections. Number one, it is questions you're going to ask the seller before you even agree to meet. So this is just basic information. If he is a compression tester, find out the compression of the four-wheeler. Uh, he's obviously probably going to say, he or she is obviously going to say, it has good compression. If he has a compression tested, numbers are even better. And if he can get your numbers, ask for your name and date on a piece of paper behind the compression tester gauge so you know that he didn't just pull a picture off the internet. These steps are kind of a little over the top, but you prefer to buy a four row that's actually in good shape instead of getting screwed. Uh, if you have your own compression tester like we do, we just take it along, pull the spark plug, do our own compression test so we know for ourselves. If it's a two stroke, there's a few things, there's actually more of this pertains to a two stroke uh, for questions beforehand, but uh, you want to know if it's passed the leak down test. If it's a two stroke, a leak down test is crucial. If there's an air leak, the bike isn't running right, it's going to possibly smoke the top end. So knowing if it passed the leak down test is very important. <clears throat> now all these questions, all the info that they give you, you're going to take with a grain of salt, which means they're probably going to lie to you. But asking these questions beforehand will kind of help you understand if the seller knows what they're talking about or not. If they're just giving you these random answers that don't make any sense, I would probably not buy from that person because they really don't know what they're doing or what they're doing to their four-wheeler. The next question you want to ask is what oil mixture they're running in that four-wheeler and what oil they're using. If they reply back they're running 50 to 1 and they're running chainsaw oil for a two-stroke for a weed whacker or a chainsaw, I would not buy that. 50 to 1 is in my opinion, is not right. We're going to be doing a video covering all that uh, in a couple weeks. But find out what oil they're using. If they're using a good, reputable brand like uh, Klotz or this Caster 927, that's good. That also gives you the ability, before you buy it, to pick up a jug of that oil so you can do your own mixtures and be prepared for buying that four-wheeler. Also ask, ask what octane they've been running in it. Make sure they're not running race fuel, or something like that. I run 93 with 32 to one mixture and almost everything. So that's just a good idea to have uh, uh, before you buy the four wheeler. The next thing is recent maintenance and receipts for that maintenance. Now, obviously it's a little hard to prove that certain maintenance was done like a fresh top end, uh, you know, a fresh top end with 10 hours can be a fresh top end with 100 hours. There's no way to prove that hour time frame. But if they do wheel bearings, they have a receipt for wheel bearings for say you're buying a Yamaha Blaster. He has a receipt for wheel bearings in recent weeks. You know that's probably been done and you can check that out yourself which we're going to show you here in a bit. Uh, and then you want to hash out any details uh, about bore size. If they have no clue what bore size is and they've recently rebuilt it, they probably don't know what they're talking about because you hash all that out when you buy your piston, send it to the machine shop, all that jazz. And then uh, ask them about jetting. If they have jetted it for, you know, as an aftermarket exhaust, no air filter lid, uh, just dumb little stuff like that, shaved head, cams, make sure it's jetted. If they don't know, that'd be something I would check before you'd even buy it. And then before you even get done everything, talk about the ability to start and take it for a test ride. Some people don't like test rides because they've had people just hop on the four wheeler and take off and leave. Uh, but, you know, work out those details before you can get there. And the final section we want to cover is going to be inspection. Uh, when you agree to meet with this person, there's a few things you're going to want to take with, uh, if you have them, to look the four wheeler over. We like to bring a jack stand. Uh, we'll show you what we use the jack stand for when we move over the four wheelers. But jack stand, our compression tester if we have it, uh, a jump battery jump pack, I have one for uh, starting like cars and trucks, 
in case the four wheeler's battery's dead, I can get around it and I can start it and I can compression test it. A zip tie, we try and bring, I'll see if I can grab, I have one, a longer zip tie. Two strokes don't have a dipstick, number one. And number two, it usually doesn't go to the bottom of the case. So what I do is I take a long zip tie, I shove it down as far into the case as I can, pull it out, I'll take a rag or two along, and wipe the zip tie off. And then I'll be able to look on the rag to see if, A, if the oil's been changed recently, if it's black, how the smell of the oil, if it reeks, like well, it hasn't been changed, there's water in it, there's gas in it, there's coolant in it for four strokes. And then I can also tell, you know, if a two stroke, if the crank seals are bad, it's getting gas into the oil. You can see the condition of the oil, just it, metal shavings, I forgot about that. You can look over the engine a lot better if you bring a zip tie and look at the oil. It can tell you a lot about the engine, it can tell you a lot about the owner and what they haven't looked at. So we moved over to our collection of junk to take a look at some things you need to look at before you purchase. So what we normally do is take a jack stand and what we'll do is we'll place it under the front and the rear end so we can look at some things. You mainly want to look at wheel bearings. You know, does it spin freely? Is there any movement in the wheel itself? And then once you get that covered, there's some loose bolts on here so that's why it's wiggling. Once you look at that, what we like to do, but always can't, is actually stand the four-wheeler up. Now what that'll show you is you can see this four-wheeler is straight, it's not tweaked, and then you can also look at the bottom side here on the frame. When you're looking at the frame here, you always want to see how hard it's been cased or slammed into the ground. If there's holes, I mean this has some dents in it as usual, but if there's rust holes on blasters, they tend to rust out in the back here. LTs tend to do the same. This one's in pretty good shape. But if you can't do this, some things you can look at. You can look at the, the front of the A-arm. This has some kinks in it, but the A-arm's straight. These are just dense. If the A-arm looks tweaked, I would look into it further. While you're looking at the front end, you can look at your tie rod condition. You want to look at the boots, see if they're cracked. If they're cracked, there's probably dirt, water, and all kinds of stuff washing away the grease from the, the, uh, the ball joint on your your tie rod end, and then you want to look at your ball joints as well. Brakes, obviously, brakes aren't too big of a deal because they're pretty cheap. You want to make sure they work and they stop and you can do brake pads yourself. They're like 10, 15 bucks, pretty simple. But ball joints, tie rods, that kind of stuff gets a little bit more expensive. So you want to check all four ball joints if the quad has it. Check shocks. Uh, you want to check to see if the bushings here at top and bottom are good there's not a whole lot of crap you know if there's a lot of movement in the shock the bushing's bad you want to check uh, a-arm bushings like on this LT this is one we bought as a junker I mean there's no bushings in it there's no center uh, slot in it so that that's the kind of stuff that you want to catch before you buy that's obviously going to affect the price of the four-wheeler also check steering stem uh, there's some steering stems that have a lot of play in them you want to make sure the bushings are good or that's something you're going to need to replace. Another thing you want to look at is you want to check to make sure the bars are straight and not tweaked. If they're tweaked and you have issues down below as well, chances are it was probably flipped and there's something out of alignment. You also want to check alignment with the bars. Make sure the wheels are pointed straight with the bars centered. That kind of stuff. It's just simple little things like this that can help save you from buying a basket case. Uh, once you go from there, you might as well start front, work your way back. You want to check over the engine. Look for leaks out of the transmission case. Uh, if it's a two-stroke, you want to check for ATF or transmission fluid. Leaks around the bottom of the engine. If you know it's still a two-stroke, check the exhaust port to make sure they have the right spring on it. Make sure it's not leaking around the flange down here. It's just simple things. Uh, exhaust coupler, make sure it has a good exhaust coupler and everything. You also can check the tip of the exhaust on the back side, wipe your finger in it, see how much spooge is coming out. Uh, and then from there, check for cracked intake boots for the carburetor, uh, cracked boots coming off of the air box. Uh, they tend to crack a lot for people taking them on and off all the time, so it's just simple little things you can check. Check the air box, make sure it's not cracked and damaged. And then you can also check 
pull the spark plug and see how the uh, carburetor has been jetted. You want to look for a nice caramel color on the tip of the uh, spark plug. You don't want to like white, that obviously means it's really lean. So before you ahead, before you get there, research the size you need to pull the spark plug. Honestly, if the buyer or the seller has an issue with you uh, pulling the plug out and looking at it, stuff looking over stuff, there's probably something wrong with the four wheeler. They're very defensive about you looking at it. And then from looking over the engine, you can move to the back of the four wheeler. Now most four wheelers have aluminum subframes and carriers. So it's something really important you want to look at. Make sure the carrier isn't cracked at the front or has chain wear where the chain guide is. And then you want to look at the carrier in the back, or the, sw the swing arm, I should say, not the carrier. Look to swing over over because they're aluminum, make sure it's not cracked. Carrier doesn't have any damage, check the carrier bearings, use a jack stand. Pick up the back of the quad, check out that. Check out your brake reservoirs, make sure there's brake fluid and everything. Check your chain, sprockets front and rear, check for wear. Just simple stuff. You can get you ahead of the game before uh, you purchase a basket case, pretty much. I mean, there's a million things you can look at. You may not look at everything, but the more things you look at ahead of time, the better off you are before you purchase. And then once you look it over, start it up, see how it runs. They let you take it for a test drive, take it for a test drive. I definitely recommend that. So that's pretty much it. Just covering a quick little video for you guys. So thanks for watching. As always, check out our Facebook page. Shoot us a message on there if you have any questions. We are very willing to help. And subscribe to our YouTube channel as always. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully I have some more videos for you guys this week. We will talk to you guys later.